Hello again, everybody, and welcome to episode three of my new art blog. Most of the paintings that I've done in the last couple of years have been pretty large, and that's because I happen to like large paintings. I live in a house that has large walls. Now that I'm starting to show my work, I decided to try a new concept. I, I came up with the idea of doing hand-painted prints. So in today's show, I'm down here back in the studio and I am starting uh, a new project where I'm going to do a group of paintings that will be a smaller version of my larger painting, Reservoir Sunset 2. I'm down here in the workshop. I think I said studio before, but I am down in the workshop. The next step is for me to get the saw set up. I bought a piece of plywood yesterday and I need to cut five pieces, 20 inches by 32 inches. All right, five pieces of wood are cut. Next step is to cut the aluminum to make the frame to support the backs. And to do that, I use this one by one aluminum extrusion. It has one slot on one of the sides uh, called a T-slot. Uh, this is manufactured by a company called 8020. I get this material at a distributor called Fastenal not sponsored by either of those two companies, but I do like this material and it does seem to work out for me. So there are corner brackets that you can use to attach these um, extrusions together in a lot of different shapes. It's kind of like a big erector set. So I've got a bunch of it right here. I'm gonna move a couple of pieces over to the chop saw and cut them down to the appropriate length. One of the things when you're mass producing something or when you're making more than one of a thing at a time, uh, one of the fun things that I like to do is to come up with ways to make the process easier or more efficient or to minimize the chance for mistake. So uh, in this step, because I know I need to make 10 pieces 31 and a half inches long, I have attached a block or I clamped a block to my work table here that is the right distance away from the saw, so I don't have to measure all 10 times. Now I'll cut the 45 degree angles so that I can make a rectangle. I got all the pieces cut. Now I'm gonna clean up the garage a little bit, move my car in, and get ready for the snow that's coming tonight. Move 
back down into the studio and the next step is to take these little corner pieces like that forms a corner gets all tightened all the frames built up and I have this 3M double-sided sticky tape so I'll just repeat this process for all five frames that I just built then the next step will be to actually attach the plywood panels that I cut yesterday Just basically try to do it by eye. So after this step, I will write on the back of it the name of the painting, number within the edition, and sign it. Make sure this is in focus. Tomorrow when I get back to work, it's going to be time to make the stencils for these five paintings. So when I come back, I'll be doing that. This is the material I use to make the stencils. It's basically a thick rubber with a sticky back like a giant sticker that I feed into the uh, vinyl cutting machine. Set up the digital image on my computer and then I send it over to the cutting machine and it cuts the stencil out um, perfectly. Now that I've got all the stencils cut with the cutting machine, the next step is to weed out all of the parts of the stencil that are needed. And the tool that we use to do that is called a weeding tool. Got the stencils weeded, and the next step is to take this transfer tape, roll it out, attach it to the stencil, squeegee it on, then the backer paper gets pulled off. one stencil ready to get stuck on. I built this jig a couple of weeks ago to help me to line up the stencils. I just need to make sure that 
I put the top of the stencil in the right place. And most of the time, I can reuse the transfer tape two or, or two or three times. Now I think you can see with the contrast with the stencil and the black is much better than it was before. So there it is, one down, four to go. Normally when it comes time to add color to a painting, I start from the top and work my way down. But in this case, there are two areas that are going to be painted black. This here and this tiny little sliver here. And black oil paint takes longer to dry than the other color, so I want to get that on first. I use this Windsor Newton Cerulean Blue Hue quite a lot. It's It's gotta be my favorite color. It's super buttery, very opaque. Even though it's a hue, I love when colors go on with one coat. Really like a uh, true cyan. I use it a lot. Back here in real time, and I'm at the last step with the last painting, and it's time to pull the stencil off. As you can see, the, the lines, the black lines here are a little fuzzy because uh, the stencil is covered with paint, so when I pull each piece of the stencil off, it really tightens up the painting and it gets sharper and crisper and it, it just starts to look really great. So this is, this is my favorite part of the whole process. New ways to be a New ways to be a New ways to be a